la bagosse. On est habitué à smogler la bagosse. La bagosse. J'en ai une bonne à vous compter. Welcome to the Frenchville Historical Society. Founded in 1985 and located in the town of Frenchville, Maine. Frenchville is a small town in northern Maine on the border between the United States and Canada. The society has two centers of interest. The first is a water tower built in 1910 which was used to hold water for the steam locomotives that provided passenger transportation, hauled agricultural products to outside markets, and delivered large mail-order items from outside companies. Next to the tower is the train caboose, which was outfitted as an overnight accommodation for the men who worked on the railroad tracks and also in the station yards. The second is the Wiley House, built in 1920 and acquired by the Society in 2004 and is now a museum. The Wiley House has some interesting architectural features for the time period and became an important landmark during Prohibition. As you will find out, the small portal window under the eaves of the house faces the town of St. Sedan, New Brunswick, on the opposite side of the St. John River. The portal window became a signaling device that the coast was clear to cross goods, especially bagus, across the border. This year, one of the most significant displays in the Wiley House Museum is the story of La Bagus. This story is about prohibition, a social experiment in the United States and Canada. The story is also about the close relationship of peoples of two nations separated by the St. John River. The story is about the history and culture of the area. And the story is about a long-standing economic activity. The story has two parts, making bagus, more commonly known as moonshine, and smuggling. The story begins with making bagus. The process of making bagus for home use goes back to the beginnings of human history. It was not new in the St. John Valley since most of the ingredients for making bagus were found locally. But making bagus and smuggling became more famous when the United States passed the Prohibition Law in 1919 and went into effect in 1920. Suddenly, it became illegal to make, sell, and drink alcoholic beverages. The process of making bagus then moved from the barnyard to the backwoods. The word bagus was commonly known in this area, but it was also known in other areas under such names as Zitiblan, Hand Brand, Katain, Caribou, Flakatun, and Moonshine. Making bagus requires minimal ingredients and equipment. You need potatoes, apples, raisins, sugar, fresh water, and yeast. Of course, the yeast of choice is Fleischmann yeast. For equipment, you need a large wooden barrel. These were very common since flour was bought in wooden barrels. You need a large boiling pot, which holds at least 30 gallons. You also need a copper tube that comes out of the boiling pot and passes through another barrel full of cold water. And finally, you need a collecting container. A large glass jar works fine. 
The first part of making bagus is making mash. First, dissolve the Fleischmann yeast in water. Pour this in the wooden barrel. Make sure that the barrel is well sealed. This is done by submerging the barrel in water for several days so that the wood will swell and seal all the cracks. First, peel and slice 12 large potatoes and put them in the barrel. Next, cut 12 nice ripe apples in half and put them in the barrel. Add 4 pounds of raisins. Then add 50 pounds of sugar. You can also use molasses, but it will give the bagus a slight color. Then add 25 gallons of fresh water. Stir all of this to dissolve the sugar. Cover the barrel with a clean cloth and store the barrel in a warm place for seven days. After seven days of fermenting, the liquid is removed from the barrel and put inside the boiling pot. This is closed at the top with a coil of copper tubing inserted into the cover and allows the steam to escape. The coil passes through a barrel filled with cold water. As the steam goes through the coil, the cold water will condense the steam into liquid. A glass jar is placed at the end of the tube to collect the liquid. This is bagus. Here you see a diagram of the bagus distillation process, starting from the fire underneath the boiling pot, the steam going through the coil into the cold water barrel, and finally the bagus collection jar. Here we see a picture of the bagos distillation process, hidden in the woods, dans les concessions. <laughs> As part of the State of Maine, St. John Valley Cultural Scenic Byways Project, interpretive panels located next to the Frenchville Historic Water Tower tells the second part of our story, that is, the story of smuggling. Although crossing things across the border, such as margarine, sugar, and animals, especially on the ice during the winter months, was a normal area activity. But prohibition brought a new commodity to the smuggling trade, that is, the importation of bagus into the United States. One of the largest bagus import route involved the islands of St. Pierre et Miquelon off the southern coast of the province of Newfoundland. Although the province was under British control, these islands were under the control of France. Since France had no prohibition laws, bringing liquor into these French islands was legal. Boats, especially fishing boats, could then take the liquor and bring it into Canada. The liquor known as hand brand, was then smuggled into the U.S. using the existing smuggling routes. Area personalities such as Maxime Albert and Fred Levac then began smuggling large amounts of bagus across the St. John River, especially from St. Hilaire to Frenchville. The Wiley House with its portal window, which could be seen from St. Hilaire, was used as a signal that the coast was clear to cross with the Bagus. The smuggling activity continued during the years from 1920 through 1933. It also brought people of Frenchville and St. Hilaire that had been divided by the international boundary in 1842 much closer together. Today, the history and story of La Bagos and smuggling is still seen in the area. This is the Complex Maxime Albert, which still exists today in saint cyr New Brunswick. Inside the Maxime Albert Complex, we still find a still to make Bagos. 
This still was used to make bagasse during the 2014 World Acadian Congress. This is the house in Frenchville, where Maxime Albert lived during his years of exile from Canada. The house was owned by Mademoiselle Mary Jane Michaud, but now is owned by Bert and Jackie Parody. This is a photo of the first hotel in saint Cyr, New Brunswick. The hotel was owned by Maxime Albert, although it burned in 1914. Although Maxime Albert was a renowned smuggler, he was a devout Catholic. You must remember that smuggling was not a sin. Here is Maxime's daughter, who was a Sœur du Saint-Rosaire. Maxime was also very generous towards the church. He supported the building of the church in Baker Brook. He also gave the land as well as furnished the bricks to build the rectory in saint Cyr. Maxime was also surrounded by bootlegger friends. It was also rumored that he had connections with Chicago's Al Capone. In this photo, he is surrounded by his bootlegging friends, Georges Albert, Fred Lavac, Gilbert Bourgoin, and Albéry Albert. Here we see Maxime with another one of his reputed friends, Fortuna Pelletier. The Frenchville Historical Society invites you to visit their museum complex and see the Bagus exhibit. The museum is open during the summer months and at other times by appointment. Information about the museum and its collection can also be obtained by contacting the Frenchville Town Office. La Bagosse La Bagosse On est habitué à smuggler La Bagosse La Bagosse J'en ai une bonne à vous compter